One other uh, fun note from these early years is that there was a group of us, I always thought of the, as the, uh, the Three Musketeers. Uh, in 1998 or so, Shu was heading up product development in Japan. Andy House was head of marketing for Sony Computer Entertainment America. I was producer on the titles. And we, the three of us were almost exactly the same age. We were born within a year of each other. And we must have been just 34 or 35 at the time, which seems incredibly young when I look back at it now. So when their contracts expired, um, Naughty Dog and Insomniac decided to work directly with Sony Computer Entertainment. And I had a difficult decision to make. Should I follow them? Or should I stay on as president of Universal Interactive Studios and rebuild? And it, it was a tough decision, but I, I chose to leave Universal Studios and continue working with those talented developers. So in, in 1998, I founded Cerny Games and have now spent the last 15 years working as a consultant, not just with Naughty Dog and Insomniac, but also uh, a number of other companies within the PlayStation universe. Now, we'd had um, a busy four years with Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon, but Ken Kudaragi had also been busy. He took the, the success of the first PlayStation as an opportunity to bring his vision for console hardware to a whole new level. And by night, early um, 1999, working prototypes had been completed of the PlayStation 2. And a team of programmers was hard at work in a locked room in Tokyo, creating the demo programs that would be used in the springtime launch of the hardware. Now, Shu Yoshida, his name is going to come up a lot here today, uh, contacted me. He'd heard that the hardware was much more powerful, but that many were struggling with its complexity. And he wanted to make sure that Naughty Dog and Insomniac, who would be creating early titles for PlayStation 2, got off to as fast a start as possible. So he extended an invitation to me. I could enter that locked room. I could sit alongside the demo team, and I could work on a graphics engine for PlayStation 2. And I ended up living in uh, Tokyo for three months as the first American to get his hands on the system, and did indeed create a game engine that became a reference point for the early engine work of those two developers. And Shu was right about its complexity. Uh, it was a lot more time consuming to get going on PlayStation 2 uh, than it was on PlayStation 1. Uh, I think of hardware complexity in terms of, of time to triangle, by which I, I don't mean the time to create a program that displays one triangle. One triangle, that's trivial. I mean the time to create an engine that comes close to what the hardware is theoretically capable of in terms of triangle count. Now, for PlayStation 1, time to triangle was just a month or two. All you had to do was call some library functions. But for PlayStation 2, it took something like half a year as the programmers had to learn to write efficient assembly code for the vector units. These were uh, embedded graphics processors created specifically for the PlayStation 2. In a sense, this was our first wake-up call. Thanks to the much higher performance of the PlayStation 2, game developers were able to radically increase the richness of the content that they were creating. Something like the uh, world of Jack and Daxter simply wouldn't have been possible on any previous hardware. But that richness came at a cost. Each, each um, game developer now needed a team of talented professionals who would do nothing other than write that low-level graphics code. And there was a loss of flexibility, too. If the creative director had some new idea where to take the game, a lot of that low-level graphics code would need to be scrapped and rewritten. In the end, despite all of that, it turned out very well. Uh, for Sony Computer Entertainment, PlayStation 2 is by many measures the most successful console in the history of video games. And I had a great time. I spent a focused four years creating games for the platform, focusing primarily on uh, engine technology for Jack and Daxter and game design for Ratchet and Clank. Now, it's hard to imagine, but in those years, um, we were just on a five-year hardware cycle. Uh, meaning just five years between one generation of consoles and the next. So my time on PlayStation 2 was pretty brief. In 2003, I was working on just the second game in each of those series when Shuhei Yoshida came by with an, an, an idea. Shu Yoshida was now head of Sony Computer Entertainment America product development. So all of the U.S. game teams reported to him, and he had concerns. Some of his concerns were about cost. There were many good game teams in the States, but they were all working independently, and the, uh, the size of the typical team had tripled over the last years. Shu wondered if collaboration and technology sharing could reduce the cost of game development, or at least slow its rise. 
He also had concerns, which turned out to be justified, that the next platform transition might be even trickier than the last, and he wanted to be sure that Sony Computer Entertainment America was up to the challenge of PlayStation 3. So we ended up forming a, uh, a specialized technology group whose function was to spearhead SCEA's entry into the next generation. Uh, Shu thought that Naughty Dog might be um, a good base of operations, and after some conversations with the founders, Jason Rubin and Andy Gavin, we decided to free up some people from work on the Jack and Daxter sequel and uh, uh, use them as a base from which to grow the tech team. And we ended up uh, naming the group the ICE Team, which initially stood for the initiative for a common engine. Its goal was to investigate advanced graphics and other technologies and to build and disseminate various early systems um, that could be used as games began their, um, as the teams began their preliminary next generation game development. Shu's hope was that as the PlayStation 3 generation progressed, uh, we'd then continue to foster inter-team collaboration and thereby increase both the quality of the titles and reduce their development costs. Now, even though we knew nothing about PlayStation 3 at the time, we suspected that the transition from PS2 to PS3 would be challenging. Uh, we could tell by looking at the PC graphics world that a revolution of sorts had occurred. Uh, something called programmable shading was now possible. And what this meant was that a program could be run on any, every pixel of the game scenes, which opened up a lot of potential, uh, but also meant that our approach to graphics needed to be scrapped and rewritten. So uh, we on the ICE team definitely had a lot to study up on. There was another part to Shu Yoshida's plan as well. On PS1 and PS2, the hardware team had worked in complete isolation. They conceptualized the design, they laid out the circuitry, they built prototypes, they wrote documentation. And when the hardware was complete, they would pass that documentation off to developer support who would brief the teams. There was essentially no communication whatsoever between the hardware team and the game teams. For PlayStation 3, uh, Shu Yoshida had amazingly gotten approval to embed ICE team members with the hardware team in Tokyo, meaning that we would sit side by side with them as the hardware was being designed and learn the details of what was being created. The idea was that by breaking down this barrier between game and hardware teams, we could, would be able to start our game development work at least a year earlier. And as for who would join that hardware team, uh, Shu's first choice was me. I was bilingual working with a number of the game teams already, and I'd done something similar for PlayStation 2. So in the late summer of 2003, I went to Tokyo and entered the Sanctum Sanctorum, uh, the top secret facility where the future of Sony Computer Entertainment was being planned. And my big surprise was that the hardware team was a, a half dozen engineers in a mid-sized room in one of the many Sony buildings. I, I mean, I'd, I guess I'd expected something from a James Bond movie or maybe uh, an elite high-tech facility of sorts, but that was the first lesson for me. These kinds of projects are driven by just a few, uh, few people with a vision, and all they need to do the basic hardware design work is desktop PCs. Now, at that time, the design of Cell was done, and the hardware team was hard at work on the graphics processor that would complete the system. So the hardware team leader uh, said to me, Mark, um, here's documentation on Cell, here's a simulator, let us know what you think you can do with it. And it turns out this was a bit of a test. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. At any rate, Cell was Ken Kutaragi's brainchild, and the SPUs in Cell are like a supercomputer on a chip. They have high performance, but to get that performance, you have to master their very high complexity. What you need to do is, is pick a small objective, maybe just an uh, a single short loop that does uh, some fairly simple processing. Then you break it down into various sub-operations. -oper and finally, you need to solve a puzzle, how to optimally perform those sub-operations on the hardware. If you can do it, the result is tremendous uh, performance. But as a programmer, it's kind of like solving a Rubik's Cube. And it's pretty much like that the first hundred times you sit down to write a program. In other words, the SPUs had huge potential, larger than any conventional CPU, but a correspondingly huge effort was required to unlock that potential. Now, this was, um, as I said, a test of sorts. The, the hardware team had to compare the overhead of having me around with the possible benefits that come with increased understanding of how the hardware will actually be used in game projects. And at the end of the month, uh, that first month, they had me give a, a formalized presentation showing what I'd, be, what I'd been able to accomplish with the SPUs. I had a, a number of programs working. I'd made quite good progress on understanding how to use the SPUs. And I think I even managed to surprise the hardware team 
a little bit. So you could say I passed the test. I would also really enjoyed that month too. I, I love puzzles, but, and I'm, I'm ashamed to say this, I wasn't thinking about the practical reality of making a game using SPUs. And I never imagined that the cost of cell would be one of the, one of the factors that caused PlayStation 3 to ship at a price of $599. I was just staying focused on the task at hand, which is trying to figure out how best to use the chip that had already been designed. Now, my reward for passing the test is that when I came to work the next day, there was another manual sitting on my desk. It described the details of the GPU that the hardware team was in the process of designing. And this was the start of a long collaboration between the hardware team and the ICE team. Uh, basically, I and a few others would shuttle back and forth between the US and Japan. When in Tokyo, we'd learn about the hardware being built and try writing code for it in emulation to test our understanding. When in the US, I'd work with the other ICE team members to design a software architecture that could be used in the first party games. And this was an exciting time, but it was also a scary time. It was exciting because the technology was so new, and if used properly, it was so powerful. It was scary because it was hard to figure out how to do the most basic tasks on the hardware. At any rate, after a year or so of this, at which point our little team had grown to more than a dozen programmers, we started to have confidence that we'd done it. We'd cracked the code, we'd solved the puzzle, we'd figured out how to make games on the hardware. We were happy. We were happy because it was now, there was now the potential uh, for some fantastic titles to come out of first party teams in the US. And we were also happy because we had a tremendous lead over every third party team that would try to make games for the platform. The third parties hadn't been even briefed yet, let alone uh, started work on their PlayStation 3 engines. Our feeling was that Electronic Arts and Rockstar better watch out. Our proprietary first party systems were going to show them who just, sorry, show them who had the right stuff. Now, this was, of course, completely the wrong attitude. But at the time, we just didn't know any better. We were all working on behalf of Sony Computer Entertainment's US game teams, and we were just thinking about our individual game titles. We weren't thinking about the platform at all. So by this time, it was already early 2005, and the hardware launch was set for holiday 2006, less than two years away. Our focus changed from creating shared technology to trying to develop launch and launch window titles. And we had, had to come face to face with a very tough fact. It was going to be quite difficult to create those titles. One problem that surfaced at this point was that the emphasis had been, um, for those first few years, 99% hardware and 1% software. PS3 hardware was now close to a reality, but uh, the game teams lacked many of the tools necessary to create their titles. There was no quality debugger for the SPUs, there were no GPU debug or performance analysis tools, there was no level graphics uh, driver. The entire development environment was in a very primitive state. The first party teams were having a hard time of it, but the third party teams, without the luxury of just being able to focus on PlayStation 3, um, and without the benefit of our early start, we're having an even more difficult time of it. Another problem was that Time to Triangle had taken an enormous leap. Um, the teams that I worked with in the first party needed basically an entire year to create usable graphics engines. The sky-high expectations for the game titles could only be met through uh, clever use of SPUs, but both the unique nature of Cell and the primitive state of the development environment meant that game creation on PlayStation 3 was more time-consuming than any previous platform. Now, fortuitously, uh, due to the more open nature of the PS3 development process, the various tech teams, such as the ICE team, were already fully briefed on the hardware and, in fact, had quite a bit of experience with it. So these teams um, had the knowledge and resources to start independently creating various tools and technologies to make PS3 game development easier. And we'd also finally uh, and collectively figured out that third parties were essential for the platform success. So though up to that date the focus had been on proprietary first party tools, now there was a complete turnaround in attitude and the question became how quickly and to what degree we could expose our formerly proprietary systems to third parties. So um, in late 2005, the various game studios in Japan, US and Europe uh, were merged to form the worldwide studio. And one of our first acts was to figure out which first party teams had the strongest tools and technologies and how best to share those tools and technologies with the worldwide studio's software competitors. 